Today I'm going to do a comparison and contrast with the new Holosun 512 and an EOTech EXP. The Holosun optics have been around for quite some years and I've been very pleased with them. From the moment they came out, I encountered one at a local gun show and the quality of the item, the fit, finish, construction was so far ahead of the other um, non-name brand, if you will, non-Trigicon, non-EOTech, so on and so forth. So I was very, very impressed by the fit and finish. What I saw at the gun show appeared very, very good. So I purchased a, just a single unit to evaluate. And I have a video of an evaluation of that. But um, the quality was great. They hold zero, they're not recoil impacted. I've used them on a variety of items. And as far as price for the dollar goes, they honestly can't be beat. So the reason that I've chosen the EOTech for comparison, let me move this a bit here so you can see, is they're nearly the same size. As far as you know, a, a functional item being placed on top, Holosun's a little smaller overall, uh, which I do like, but approximately the same size. And the EOTech is extremely popular. It's a very well-known optic, and I feel that viewers of this video may be able to easily relate the two uh, items, even if they haven't experienced the Holosun 512. So I'm gonna put the EOTech aside for a moment. Some of the features on the Holosun optics are these solar panels on the top. What those do is they, they allow you to actually use the reticle in a battery failure scenario. So if you have sufficient lighting, your reticle will still light. However, my favorite feature of them is they act as light detection. The reticle is automatically adjustable from a bright to dim reticle based upon the exterior lighting. So should you move from a you know, very well lighted to very dark area, example going from outdoors in full sun to a dark interior location, the reticle will automatically dim. When you move into a dark location, having an extremely bright reticle is, actually makes it very difficult to see. It makes it difficult to acquire the object through the uh, actual optic itself. So this automatic dimming works very well. You can set the level at a preset using the plus and minus keys. What I have found is that for me, I like to set it at an outdoor full sun setting that's comfortable for me. And then the automatic adjustment when moving to darker locations has always been spot on for my needs. However, it is individually adjustable for whatever you would like. So a couple other things are the fully enclosed design. See glass front and rear. Some of the other Holosun optics have had an open rear glass front. The open rear I've never had a problem with. I own a few of them. Uh, however, they do get dustier. Uh, I have to say that I you know, have to take a dust pen in there time to time. And should you happen to drop one in mud or some you know, loose material that could get inside, it'd be a little bit more difficult to clean out. If one of these were dropped in mud, obviously clean the rear, clean the front, and you're ready to go, nothing gets inside of it. So I've been very, very pleased with these. Comparing the older units, you can see they've had this solar panel technology in there for quite some time. Uh, I, I have been very pleased with that. Not all of their models have this. You can choose a full battery if you like, but I really like this and I've stayed with it. The battery life on this is stated to be 50,000 hours if you keep it on the red dot. If you go to the circle dot, they say 20,000 hours for this. I have not measured that. However, I would say that they are probably close. This particular optic I have had in a vehicle Right, and I'll tell you why that matters in a moment here. But I've had it in a vehicle for four years, the same battery, and the red dot is still functioning. I have never changed the battery on this in four years. It's as bright as the day I got it. So I've been very, very pleased with this. Um, I don't know whether 50,000 hours is accurate, but quite honestly, four years of use moving around in a vehicle, great. Okay, now, one of the other features on here uh, that's why I was mentioning the 50,000 hours, is they have a feature called shake to wake. So if this optic is sitting still and left on, it'll automatically turn off the reticle. The moment you move it even the tiniest little bit, the reticle comes on immediately. Uh, that's been very, very valuable for me, uh, you know, for something that may be sitting idle but needs to be readily available, you can just leave it on. At 50,000 hours battery life, I basically just change them once a year, just like you would a smoke detector battery. You know, they use a very simple CR2032 battery. And one of the changes they made in the 512, which I really like, is this quick release battery tray. Now at 50,000 hours, you likely don't need a quick release. 
you know, there's no need to change that in the middle of a high stress scenario if you just keep the battery up. The, however, in the older one, it was two small screws and a plastic battery tray. It was just cumbersome for me. I didn't like it. So I'm glad that they went to this model. So all we do is stick a finger in there, pull, and twist, and you pull out your battery tray with that standard CR2032 battery. Nice part about these batteries is they have an extremely long shelf life and they are available just about everywhere you could want to get a battery. Okay. So I really like this. The integral base mount is wonderful. I like that it's a single one piece that avoids any shifting uh, when the optic is mounted. Very, very pleased with it. It does have the choice of, again, the single dot or a circle dot reticle. The solar fail safe we mentioned and shake to wake. There is the memory function um, that allows you to keep your particular settings there. It has 10 daylight settings and two night vision settings. Now that, in an optic of this price point, is amazing. Um, very, very few have anything that is night vision compatible. And what that basically means is um, most optics are too bright for night vision, even at their lowest setting, and it would overload a night vision device. So having the two night vision settings is really, really great. I personally do have night vision, and I found that very, very valuable. Okay. All right. The center height is allowed for an absolute co-witness with iron sights on most um, modern um, sporting firearms. So we have just been extremely impressed with this optic overall. So what I want to show you is the EOTech. Okay, we're going to compare a few features. Uh, this one has the up and down for the brightness. We don't have a particular button for night vision. The EOTech has a button for night vision. Uh, good and bad on that. I've seen a lot of people accidentally hit their night vision button and not realize it. And then they think their, op their optic is no longer functioning. They're trying to change the settings up and down and haven't been able to get anything to work. The night vision button has some good or bad to it. I've seen a lot of people accidentally bump the night vision button and their reticle goes out. They think their battery's dead, they think their optic is broken, they're using the up and down keys, nothing's happening, and they hit the night vision button and ta-da, it comes back on. So I like the fact that the Holosun doesn't have a button specifically for night vision, it just has a mode you can set. Okay. So the EOTech. One of the things I don't like about this particular unit is it uses this 123 battery. Okay. Now, they're great batteries. They last a long time, shelf life. Um, however, they're difficult to obtain. If you're out somewhere and all that's around is a mom and pop hardware store or a local CVS, you're gonna have a hard time finding these. And they're kind of expensive. They're about four bucks a piece, uh, depending upon where you get them. Uh, also, the EOTech has a 600 hour runtime on this battery. 600 hours, 50,000 hours. The battery in here, about $2 on average. Um, the shelf life, I am not sure, but I, like I've said, this other unit has been in a vehicle for four years with the shake to wake, waking it regularly as it moves around, and it's still as bright as day one. So that, to me, is a strike against the EOTech of this particular EOTech. There are many EOTechs which run on AA batteries or a mix of the AA or CR123 batteries. So you can find that available. But we're talking about these two particulars because the size, form factor, and night vision are a nice even comparison. Okay, This one is IP67 rated, which means it's submersion rated. You can get it wet. It will not have a problem functioning. The EOTech is the same. We don't have a problem with that. However, we're going to talk about some of the differences now. They rate the Holosun as parallax-free. Parallax-free in a red dot or a holographic optic simply means that when you're looking through the optic, the impact direction doesn't change. So if you move your head around slightly, the dot will stay on the object. The Holosun is not truly parallax-free. However, it is effectively parallax-free at any true engagement distance. And I'll show you what I mean by that. We're gonna move this aside and get another camera over here where I can show you these differences. So we'll get a piece of metal here. This just simply allows me to align my other camera with the uh, red dot. 
So what I want to show you is what we talk about when we talk about parallax. And this is at a very close range and that is intentional. And here we are with the hollow sun, put a black object in place. So what happens with the red dot is as you move your eyes back and forth, your head alignment with the red dot, you can see the dot position changing. Okay, Up and down does the same thing. I'm going to change my angle of view. So let's move over to the EOTech and take a look at the same thing. So we're going to move left and right. And you can see that the point of impact of that dot is moving left and right. The biggest difference here is that parallax difference in viewing through the Holosun and the EOTech significantly decreases over time. I'm sorry, over distance. So as you're looking through these and you engage images further out, the amount of that parallax reduces. The EOTech, due to the holographic design, reduces significantly faster, or in a shorter distance, I should say, than the Holosun does. So the hollow sun actually does have some parallax in it. It is not parallax free, as they talk about, but it is very, very minimal. They both do have some of it. What will happen is at longer ranges, anything where a point and shoot would not be the chosen method, they both effectively hold zero, the dot doesn't float. So there is a little bit of a difference in there. Uh, but I haven't found it to be functionally different in shooting both on the same platform, engaging targets at various ranges. I haven't had a problem. Um, there's not been a zero point shift, uh, anything like that for me. So I've been very, very pleased with it. Um, the battery life again, 50,000 hours versus 600 hours. This, although it looks simple, can be very difficult to change. It's very tight due to the water proof nature of this construction with the o-ring this has proven very good it's very easy to get to i've been very pleased with it i do prefer these small elevation and windage adjustment screws to these to me having the right left and the up down in this orientation makes a little bit more sense versus right left up down on the side just a personal preference item doesn't really matter too much to me the base of these both have an integral base, so we don't have to worry about zero point shifts uh, with the optic and base correlation. Some other optics I've seen, some of the lower cost Chinese sourced optics have a poor fit between a separate base and the actual optic. Um, I, I didn't really care for that. These have a very tight fit on the rail and there is no ability to shift because it is a single piece. So I've been very, very pleased with those. Um, when we talk price points, this lists for, I believe, 440 ish dollars right now. I bought mine at a gun show for 375. This list for about 600, depending on options. Um, so 375, 600, that's a big difference. Um, feature for feature, I feel they're functionally equivalent. Now the EOTech obviously has a, you know, military background. I'm not going to doubt that it is probably a little more durable. However, I'm not going to impact test these. If somebody wants to see them impact tested, again, send me some and I will do the impact testing. But in my personal use, if I were worried about every single thing that could possibly occur to my, in my daily use for the money and features and battery life, I cannot beat the Holosun. They have a good pedigree. They have a great service history so far. None of mine have failed, and I own six or seven different models of the Holosun. Uh, they've been on hunting platforms, sporting platforms. I placed one on a bow just to see if it worked, and it worked great. Uh, I haven't put one on my crossbow yet, but I might just do that as well. Uh, they haven't seemed to be recoil sensitive, um, no point of impact shifts, nothing. So for saving the $150, 175 depending upon where you find them and what price you pay, the fact that the batteries are cheaper, they last 50,000 hours versus 600 hours. I can operate this in a total battery failure environment due to the solar panels, so as long as I have a sufficient light source. If the battery is dead in this, there's nothing you can do. 
The battery on here is much easier to find. It is pretty much the standard button style battery at every single location that sells button style batteries. This uses the, again, the 123 battery. There are EOTechs that use double A's. So now a double A is just as available as the CR2032 and this is. So depending upon which EOTech you're looking at, that may be a wash. However, these, if I wanted to store extra batteries, these can store extra batteries in a very, very small space. I might even be able to store them on the platform itself. This being a double A, easy to get, easy to obtain, easy to store, but it might not fit you know, with the platform that this is mounted to. So in my review and recommendation, I recommend the Holosun all day long um, over the EOTech. There are those few operational environments where the EOTech may win out, but the Holosun has been my go-to. I have enjoyed it for a significant amount of time. And again, this one that has been in a vehicle for four years with the same battery using the shake to wake function and it still as bright as it was day one. I, I honestly can't beat that for reliability. It's nice to know that I can grab and go. I don't have to turn anything on. With the EOTech, if it were a standby optic that needed to be ready in an instant, I have to remember to turn that on. I like to be able to just pick up and go. That is a really nice feature for me. So really that's about all I have to say about the Holosun compared to the EOTech. Um, they're both great optics, but however, for the money and features, the Holosun all day long for me. Thanks for tuning in.